think that's exactly what you want on this show, right? He could have maybe taken that third round off, but he kept coming for the finish against a really tough guy. What did you think of that first fight? No, no. Yeah, I mean, the guy's an absolute wrecking ball. I think the fight could have been stopped sooner, too. Um, would have liked to have seen that. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the kid Ahmad had tons of heart. You know, you tell how bad he wanted to win and how bad he wanted to stay in that fight. I mean, just the body shot, how he recovered from that and was able to stay in the first round is, is pretty impressive. So, yeah. Um, but this kid, Nazim, gave him no, no chance. Just, just stayed on top of him and just kept smashing this kid until he, until he broke him. Next fight, you had Haley Cohen. Um, you said yourself to Laura that you weren't quite sure why you chose to give her a contract. Sitting here now, we've had a few minutes to digest it. Any, any more? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I just, uh, there was a combination of things that I saw, like nothing, the fight wasn't some spectacular, like, like, like some of the other fights that happened here tonight, but there's something about her that I like. She's seven and two now, she's 30 years old, it's kind of like a now or never thing, so I'm going to give her an opportunity. In the, the main event, the one that I think <sighs> caught everyone's eye, like, you know, full speed ahead, Esteban, um, just another savage lightweight for the division, right? Just another guy who likes to get in there and tear it up. 100%. I mean, the, the guy went right after him. Uh, and the other dude was like, all right, you, you, you want to you wanna fucking throw down? Let's do it. They started going. And, uh, yeah, right up my alley. I love that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, in terms of this night again, compared to other contender series evenings, how would you rate this one if you gave it a letter grade? I know there's five contracts, but maybe, you know, Haley's fight wasn't the most exciting. Jose's was a bit sort of swung by his, his backstory. How would you rate tonight? Yeah, I mean, I, listen, when you come out of, of, of a show like tonight and, and you got a kid like, like Esteban that's 11-0 and 0 now and fights the way that he fights, the show was a huge success. And then we, we're not even talking about Claudio yet, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who also looked incredible tonight. His, fat, his hands are so fast. You know, when, when that kid came out of that spinning back fist, he saw it and was right there. Not only did he land that coming out of the spinning back fist, caught him on the way down, too. That's how fast and accurate that dude is. So, super impressed with him. Um, and obviously, Jose, uh, his interview got him the contract tonight. Yeah, you That's can. it. The fight was weird. He beat a 10 and 0 kid, came here the second time, laid out. It's easy to sit up here and yeah. fucking yap about what, you know, this and that and all this other stuff. You don't know where half these kids come from or what they go through or what it took for them to be here tonight. Um, well, he laid it out. He got me. <laughs> he got me. I said, you know what? All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give this kid the opportunity. The rest is up to him. So I just told him when I saw him out there, good luck, kid. I hope you win a world title, and I hope all your other shit clears up, and this is, you, you're getting the opportunity. Is this you make, right? you, make the most of it. Are you going soft in your old age? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Is this another reason why it's important for you to go in blind, right? Because 100%. You don't, don't want to hear those stories ahead of time. Nope. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to know anything. I don't want to know that this kid came from Longo and Sarah. I don't know, want to hear that this kid's from these guys. And I, I even try not to even look in the corners and see who they're with. You know what I mean? I don't even want to know. All I want to know is right here, right now. And then I don't even listen to all the interviews. I listen to some of them. I literally just happened to put the headphones on for this kid's interview, you know? Because the fight was weird and kind of, but he beat a guy that was 10 and 0 and has a lot of heat, you know. He's been here before as well, right? 100%. He's been here before, second chance. I, I just happened to throw those headphones on and listen to his interview, and I was like, all right. All the other fighters are going to be looking at. Look at what I'll show you. So on, on every fight, I write notes on, on what I saw and what I think. Oh, wow. All right? I write notes on every single page. Look at what I put on this one. Big fat question mark. <laughs> and then down toward the bottom, I said, story just won the contract. So, um, yeah. Kid's 27, 14, and 7, and he's going to get us. You, you, when's the last time you saw us sign somebody that was 14 and 7? Yeah, it doesn't happen. Maybe. Maybe a guy 14 and 7 gets on the Ultimate Fighter or something like that. That's it. Or maybe a guy 14 and 7 would, would, would have a shot. No, nah, not even. No, nah, not even true. So I'm, I'm giving this kid the opportunity. Let's see what he does with it. 
outside of tonight, obviously you just had that great show in San Diego, another, another sellout for you guys. Um, there's a couple of great fights on there, but the one that I was most drawn to was the fight between the two Yasmins. Yes. I thought that was like uh, a great fight, and I think it's one of those ones where you watch two women that you think, oh, we're going to see these girls again and again. It's like the new era. That was a glimpse into the future on Saturday night. That's what that was. 20 and 23 years old, those two. And, and the technique, the, the, the fucking savagery in both of those girls and, and the heart and the will to win. And the, I just, I loved everything about that fight. And uh, yeah, Saturday night was, was, was a great, it felt like a pay-per-view card. It really did, it was, it was awesome. Speaking of pay-per-views, you've got Kamaru and Leon this Saturday. Would you agree that Leon's skill set, the fact he's good at sort of everything, means he's the sort of guy who Kamaru could slip up on if he's not coming into this fight focused 100%? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and the thing that you got to remember with some of these guys, and, and Edwards being one of them, is this is his second shot at, you know, maybe, you know, you, you watch tape on him, you watch the fight before, whatever. Well, now you've actually been in there and fought him. You know what the holes were in your game and why you lost, and that's what you get to specifically work on to face Camaro again. And I think that's what makes Camaro so great, you know, and, and why uh, he wins on Saturday night. He should start being talked about with the greats, the Anderson Silvas and the, and the John Joneses, um, because, uh, you know, these guys have had two shots at him, everybody, including Colby Covington, who whatever you think about Colby Covington, whatever you want to say about him, if, if Kamaru Usman does not exist, Colby Covington is the champion and dominates that division. If Kamaru does win, he's talked about going up to 205, which is obviously a massive jump, but then in the pay-per-view after, you've got Hamzat versus Nate Diaz. Is it fair to say if Hamzat wins that fight, he'll get the title shot? It's fair. I don't ever do that shit, but yeah, it's fair to say if he wins, that's the fight to make. He's already beat everybody twice in the, in the top, whatever. So um, yeah, that makes sense. You know what doesn't make sense? 205. <laughs> But you know what? The, look what the guy's done. He said, I want to go fight at 205. What am I going to do? What am I going to tell him, right? Why would you not give him the opportunity? It's a bit too early to say this, right? But say Kamari wins and then Hamzat beats Nate Diaz in what's probably going to be a massive fight. How big would a fight between Kamari and Hamzat be at this point? Huge. Yeah, it's huge, especially if he wins uh, the Nate fight. Absolutely. Thanks, Dana. Which, by the way, I did a bunch of media today and everybody's counting Nate Diaz out. These, these are the kind of stories... It's, it's like, it's almost like you were just saying to me earlier, it's like people are counting Leon Edwards out. You can't count anybody out. Look at, the, look at the, what happened here tonight with some of the underdogs. He, the, in this sport, man, you never know what's going to happen. Anything is possible. Well, if Nate gets that victory, do you guys revisit and say, Nate, do you want to come back, or do you just let well, that I, be I, done? I have no idea. I mean, we'll see how this thing plays out. Again, you know, I can see where some people are like, Dana, don't ever change, but you listen to the stories tonight afterwards, and that's what got... Jose Johnson signed. Do you think you're going to make a point to try to listen to more stories afterwards? Well, I, I you know, I... I know you're busy. You don't I, get I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It just... That just sort of happened tonight. That's the way it played out. And um, like I told you, I liked everything um, uh, about Haley, but I didn't listen to her interview. And, I, I, you know, some, some I do, some I don't. Just so happened I listened to that one, and, and that kid got me. Another fighter on here, I know a lot of times you don't see the story, but I wonder, did you know any of the story about Thomas Paul coming in here that he was a deaf fighter? Was this another one of those ones that... I didn't. I didn't till Till the show? They started playing the preview, yeah. You know, and the, I thought he had a great performance up to the point he got caught. You know, I think he has a great story. Is this the kind of character and the kind of fighter that you guys would maybe offer to come back to the contenders again to see if he has... I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I leave that up to the matchmakers. Got gotcha. you. Um, Jumping outside of this event, uh, you recently, in one of the other interviews, uh, it might have been today or yesterday, you talked about some of the mistakes that the UFC made with Shane Burgos and how he was able, he ended up leaving his contract, he wanted to try the free agency. What sort of mistakes did you feel were made that, that maybe that allowed him to slip away? Well, he's not here. That was the mistake, you know? I like the kid. Yeah. Listen, do, do I think Shane Burgos was going to move on and be a world champion here and all this? No, but he's fun. He's fun. I like, I like guys that come out and they bring it every single time they fight and guys who um, want to perform, guys who want to win. Who, who has it more than that kid does, you know? Um, 
So I'm happy for him. You know, I'm happy for him and, and good for the PFL too. He, he, he's a great kid and uh, not just an exciting, fun fighter, but he's a great person. So, um, yeah, good for everybody involved in that. Yeah. We don't make, we're not perfect, but we don't, we don't fuck up often. We don't fuck up often, but we fucked that one up. Last one for me. Uh, you talked about earlier about this young town, the 20 and 23 year olds that were fighting over at the Yasmin's over at San Diego. You guys uh, signed a 17 year old to get a chance to come in here and fight on the contender series. I'm, I hope I don't butcher his name, Raul Rosas Jr. What was the decision behind that? You know, I think you guys. I don't know anything about it. So you don't know the story about him? I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I'll, spoiler. I'll know, I'll know when he fights. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, though. I mean, I guess that. He has to have something about him for them to even contemplate that at that, at that age, right? I have no idea. Awesome. <laughs> I have no idea. We'll talk about this after the fight. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. All right. Hey, Dana. Hey. Um, going back to UFC San Diego, Cheeto Vera knocked out Dominic Cruz. Um, what do you see next for him? Is it, um, I mean, is he close to a title? I mean, because we, you know, the, the next few months, the, the Bantamweight division is really heating up. So. 100%. And that's what we had a matchmaking meeting today, and literally we talked about Cheeto and all the different guys in the division, but you're exactly right. I mean, a, a lot of fights are happening in that division over the next couple months, and uh, we'll see how that whole thing uh, plays out. But, I mean, Dominic Cruz, 38 years old, been, been doing this for a long time. He came out and did what Dominic does. He looked good. Great footwork. You know, the awkward movement that he, that, that he has. Cheeto Vera dropped him like three, four times. And every time that he did, he was very patient. He didn't jump on him and, you know, overextend and run in there. He took his time, and I think he felt like he was going to eventually catch him, and he did. Um, you know, I think both guys fought an, an excellent fight. Is Cheeto getting to the point where you can take a show to to um, to uh, Ecuador? We could take a show anywhere. <laughs> we could we could do a fight anywhere in the world. But absolutely, we could go to Ecuador. And absolutely, if we go to Ecuador, we're going with, with Cheeto Vera. Um, and then finally, for me, another ex UFC fighter retired this past weekend. Uh, Roy McDonald. And I just wanted your thoughts on. Roy. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's good. You know. Rory, uh, obviously him and the Robbie Lawler fight, you know, pe people will remember that fight forever. That's, that's one of the fights that will go down in history. Um, yeah, I didn't know that, but I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy for him. Is there anything that you could share from his time in the company? No, I mean, the, the thing, I always liked Rory. Rory was always a good kid and, uh, um, you know, very quiet and very, he's a, he's a silent killer, man, uh, tough durable just you know very very tough guy thank you Dana. yeah congratulations another amazing night uh, thank you night. uh claudio the brazilian uh before the fight he was saying i'm gonna win and i'm gonna make dana white say oh my god after my fight is that what he said and you actually did i don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> i i noticed i thought the kid's fucking head came off uh that's why i was yelling oh my god yeah well, he, <laughs> mission accomplished. Yeah. Actually, you did all my F, God. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, how, much, how much do you think uh, Lorenzo Fertitta would have liked, uh, liked tonight if he was here? Yeah, well, Lorenzo, Lorenzo, I don't know if Lorenzo's bad luck or, or, uh, or what, but uh, <laughs> he picked the wrong night to come, or I picked the wrong night to invite him, whichever one you want to call it. Perfect. My last question for you. Um, this Saturday, UFC Salt Lake City, Paulo Costa, he's fighting again. Yep. And his last fight was here at the Apex, and we know all the issue with the cut weight. Is there any concern about that for this fight? It's going to be 185. Pounds. Yeah, no, I'm not concerned. Um, uh, no. Listen, he's a professional. He's a pro. Hopefully, he comes in. If, you know, if both those guys show up and do what they both do, that should, that should be a fun fight. So... No, I'm not worried about anything, so we'll see. Good? Yep, go ahead, bud. Hey, Dana, just a hey. question. Um, Claudio came in at, I think, 181 and a half on the scales for his fight tonight. Uh, he's fought most of his career at 185. I'm just wondering if maybe that's a guy that drops to 170 
or does he stay at 185? Mm, it's a great question. I didn't notice that on there. I'm looking at it now, yeah. Um, wow. That, that's a big 170-pounder. That, that, that's interesting. So what do you say? Did, did, did he really not even cut? He just came in at 181? He didn't cut weight? I'm not 100% sure. I just saw the scale. Ask him that when he comes in, if he cut weight. If sure. he didn't, yeah, that's impressive. He can make 170 easy. Sure. And then uh, this past weekend in San Diego, I think one of the biggest pops of the night was when uh, Patty Pimblett walked into the arena. People were chanting, oh, Patty the Batty. I'm just wondering when you signed him, did you expect him to have this big of an impact? Yeah, I think that, that we knew that he was, uh, he was right there on the, on the cusp of being a, a big star. You never know how somebody's really going to come over, you know, uh, until it happens. But, yeah, we, 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 we knew that he was going to be big. And he was talking about possibly fighting in December. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. All right. He's going to have to lose some weight. <laughs> Actually, what do you make of his weight fluctuation? He said he was 200 pounds on Saturday night. What do you make of the fact that he blows up and blows down in between fights? It's not good for you, you know? I mean, we all know that. We know that fluctuating and cutting that much weight is, is very bad. And, um, and it, uh, it definitely doesn't prolong your career. You know, it's, it, it's tough on your body and, and, and your organs and stuff like that. But... Listen, he's a grown man. He can, he can do whatever the hell he wants to do. Um, you know, it makes it tough for us, too, because when we're in the, in the matchmaking room, we want to throw together a fight. Maybe, maybe, maybe we could throw him on a card in a month, month and a half. It hurts us, too. We have to be very specific when we plan fights for him because he's, he's nowhere near close to weight. And what you don't want to do is put that kind of pressure on him to cut that much weight uh, in that short amount of time. So. Is that the sort of thing as well, that if you did do that and then he missed weight, you can imagine the crazy backlash about it, right? Like, oh, you blew up so much and then you missed weight. You know, you don't, you don't want that to happen to him either, right? I, don't, I really don't give a shit about backlash, but, you know, I'm, I care more about him and his health and safety than, than backlash. Do you ever have a com will, do you think you'll one day have a conversation with him about like, okay, you're no. now getting older? That's none of my business, man. That's, that's, that's all up to him. You know, if, if this guy, you know, likes food, listen, I, he's preaching to the preacher over here. <laughs> I like food too, so I get it. Um, get him on Fuck It Friday. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's totally up to him, man. It's his life, it's his career, it's his body, he can do whatever he wants. Dan, a follow up. Um, UFC 279 just a couple weeks away. Um, are you planning on, on throwing another fight on that, uh, another big fight on that card? Which card are you? For uh, UFC 279? Um, yeah. Thank you. Yes. We're working on that today. We're going to throw a few more fights, not one. Yeah, it's going to be a good card. And super quick, Dana, you got two weeks out from the Boxing Hall of Fame. I know you were involved before and for Vinny Paciencia. Anything going on that you're working with, with the Boxing the, Hall of Fame? No, I'm not involved in that at all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You guys done with me? Go ahead, brother. Just finally here. Uh, just curious, how many times has happened that you go to the cage and uh, greet a couple of fighters like, like what happened between the Jasmines? Very, very few. Very few. I, I was so blown away by that fight. And, and uh, yeah, I, I was just, I had to go over and tell them both how incredibly badass they are and how blown away I was by their performance. And, and uh uh, it's it's very rare that I do it. You know, I go up there and put the belts on when the belts, but I just I stay out of it and everybody does their thing. And if I want to talk to somebody, I usually talk to them in the back. You know, I'll go grab somebody in the back or whatever, but that one had me fucking running over to the stairs to, you know. It was awesome. And, and just, Jasmine has been labeled as her as the female Brandon Marino. She tr she used to train with him. So you you see that you see that 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 charm that 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 heart in her. Well, yeah, I mean, she, yeah, she's awesome. But what, what blows me away is is the level that those two are at at 20 and 23 years old. Both of those women fighting at that level. I mean, you're not even in your prime till you're 27, 28 in the fight business. You know. What are those two girls going to look like in fucking, you know, five, six years? It's awesome. I'm a huge fan of both of them right now. People were like, uh, there was a lot of criticism of having two girls on her debut fight in the third fight of the card. You proved them, like, wrong with that? Huh? We always prove the dummies wrong that talk shit on the... 
I posted if you don't know, and people were like, oh, this is a sea level fucking, shut the fuck up. <laughs> what do any of you know about fighting? Shut up. Just sit on the couch, shut the fuck up, and watch, okay? That's what you do. Other than that, it's fucking crap. 22 years we've been doing this, and you know, it's always the cards that everybody starts shitting on. Oh, this one's blah, 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 okay. When, when was the last time we had a card that you were like, oh, this, this was fucking terrible? Years, it's been years. Um, and these kids come out and fight their asses off, man, so when I gotta listen to these fucking idiots on, on social media, it's just fucking, oh my God. Have a great night. <laughs>